Okay, guys. Today we're going to be talking about lateral medullary or Wallenberg syndrome, and we're going to try to correlate some of the clinical findings with the brainstem anatomy that's involved. Okay, so here's a quick presentation. You have a patient that presents with hoarse voice slash dysphagia, ataxia, let's say on the left side, incoordination on the left side, opposite-sided pain and temp loss in the body, left-sided pain and temp loss in the face, and then a Horner syndrome on the left side. Okay, so that's sort of the clinical picture. Now let's go through some of the brainstem anatomy that, that should kind of clear this all up. All right, here's a sagittal cut of the brainstem. We've got our midbrain, pons, medulla, and that little gray rock back here is our cerebellum. Okay, adding in some vasculature, we've got the vertebral artery feeding the basilar. And then coming off the vertebral artery, notice it's the vertebral, not the basilar artery. But coming off this vertebral artery is the pica. Coming off the basilar is the ica, also the ska, and then finally the basilar terminates in the PCA. Okay, we're going to start adding in brainstem motor nuclei. Here's the somatic... Uh, First, first somatic nucleus is the ocular motor nucleus in the midbrain. Here we've got our trochlear nucleus, our abducens nucleus, and then the hypoglossal nucleus in the medulla. Okay, this is a visceral motor nucleus. This is the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus nerve. All right, moving on to uh, branchial arch-derived um, muscles as opposed to the somatic muscles. We've got the nucleus for the uh, trigeminal nerves. Here we've got the facial nucleus. Here we've got the nucleus ambiguous, so that's 9 and 10. And then finally we've got the nucleus to the accessory nerve uh, down in the medulla. Alright, this is sensory. This is our spinal trigeminal nucleus. It spans the brainstem and then here is the new here are the nuclei for cranial nerve 8 this is the cochlear nucleus and the vestibular nucleus okay now we're going to start drawing it in tract fibers this is the corticospinal tract here we have the uh, dorsal column fibers and notice how it the dorsal columns decussate in the medulla from dorsal medial to ventral medial. We also have our hypothalamospinal fibers. Those are fibers going from the hypothalamus down through the brainstem uh, into uh, the spinal cord, ultimately destined for the cervical ganglion. Here we have our anterolateral system. This gives us pain and temp. And remember, this decussated within the first two levels after entering the spinal cord. And finally, we have some spinocerebellar fibers, giving proprioceptive input from the body en route to the cerebellum. So what happens in lateral medullary syndrome is that you have some sort of occlusion or ischemia of pica. And here we have that drawn with a little orange oval. And actually, typically, the pica uh, occlusion comes from vertebral artery, some sort of vertebral artery pathology, like a thrombus or an embolus or a dissection. So to sort of focus on the aspect of the brainstem that's affected by lateral, med by, by lateral medullary syndrome. We've got our nucleus ambiguous, our vestibular nucleus, our spinal trigeminal nucleus, and then these three tract fibers. And notice how our dorsal column, medial lumniscus, and the uh, cortical spinal fibers are not involved. Okay, so now let's go back to our clinical picture. So again, our patient had hoarse voice dysphagia. Well, that's because of involvement of nucleus ambiguous, cranial nerve 9 and 10. Our patient had ataxia on the left side. Well, that's because we've 
infarcted or spinal cerebellar fibers. The patient had incoordination on the left side. That's involvement of the vestibular nucleus. The patient had right-sided, meaning contralateral, pain and temp loss in the body. Well, that's because of the ALS fibers. And again, uh, ALS, two, about two levels rostral to where it entered the spinal cord. It switches sides. It decussates over to the other side. And then it travels up through the spinal cord, up through the brainstem. And so when we have um, a problem in our left pica, that's affecting ALS fibers that originated from the right side of the body. And then we've got left-sided pain and temp loss in the face. That's ipsilateral involvement of the trigeminal nucleus. And finally, Horner's syndrome. That was from involvement of those hypothalamospinal fibers. So when we see those clinical symptoms, we know that that's classic for lateral medullary or Wallenberg syndrome via left vertebral artery disease. All right, thanks guys.